Spencer's Epic website. That's epic.gsfc.nasa.gov. And as you can see, you get this nice little thing with the magnifier. You can look at the Earth. And Epic is a satellite that's situated at the L1 point, which basically is around about a million miles away from Earth. The exact distance is there. And it's in between the Earth and the Sun, is its orbit. And it looks back towards the Earth. Now, if we go up here to this galleries page, we can see we've got this lunar transit. And on July the 5th, 2016, the moon passed between the satellite and the Earth, and Epic looked at the view. So let's have a look at these images. And here we have the moon. And you can see it's coming along. And then eventually it passes out of frame. Now, I looked at these images and I thought, hang on a minute, there's something wrong here. And the first thing is the moon looks a little too small. Now, the moon is around about one third the diameter of the Earth. Well, this moon here looks less than a third the diameter of the Earth, yet it's closer to us than the Earth, so surely it should appear larger. That was the first thing that I noticed. Hmm, very odd. The next thing I noticed is you can see that this large crater on the top left here, and if we look at an early image like this one, Look at the distance between that crater and the edge of the moon. And then we look at the last image. Look at the distance between the crater and the moon. It hasn't changed. Why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because the moon always keeps the same face towards the Earth. That means as the moon goes around the Earth, it's rotating so that that face always faces the Earth. And if it rotates, I said to myself, then surely, surely, that distance should be growing larger. Because as the moon moves towards the right, it should be spinning towards us. So we should be able to see more of this area here. And it looks like that's not happening. And then I thought, well, if they've forgotten to make the moon spin, maybe they've forgotten to make the Earth spin as well. But they haven't. The Earth's spinning quite nicely. Um, so this is most strange. I thought to myself, I thought, no, I must be, I must be actually dreaming, I must be imagining this. And um, so I thought, well, I'll get my trusty Blender 3D modeler out and make a model. And that's exactly what I did. I made an Earth, which was proportional to its real size. I made a Moon that was proportional to its real size. I made the moon the same distance away from the earth as it should be, its average orbital distance. And then I stuck a camera way out in the middle of nowhere and had to make it a very long focal length to get this picture, as you can imagine, because the camera's a hell of a long way away. Um, and I got something similar to this. It's not quite the same. I'm not above the orbit I'm almost bang on it but hey the principle of the moon turning should still be the same so let's go and have a look at that
Well, did you notice the difference? <laughs> hmm. I thought, well, maybe there's something else I can do with this model because there was something else that's puzzled me. If we look at this, very popular NASA picture, and this was taken on one of the Apollo missions as the actual module orbited the moon and the modules a couple of hundred miles or so above the surface and it's looking towards the earth and you can see the earth in the distance there and I thought hmm this doesn't look quite right either because if the earth's three times the size of the moon I would have thought it would look a little bigger than that so using the same model I glued my camera a couple of hundred miles above the moon and changed the focal length so that the curve on the horizon was about the same because I don't know what focal length the actual camera was they had um, that was the only way I could really do it and I produced this video Okay, did you catch that? Yes, the Earth here is too small. I mean, maybe they did it to actually, I don't know, maybe they did it to actually make the Earth look like it was further away to emphasize the distance in space they'd come. I don't know. And then I thought, well, let's take a look at this. So I'll copy that image. And I'll put this image into my favourite photo editor. And let's get a decent look at it. There we go. Let's just play with the contrast. What happens if we play with the contrast? Hmm. So we go to colours. start to see something perhaps a little bit strange and it's going to be difficult for you to see let's try zooming in a bit more now we can see it. We can see that around the whole of the Earth, including down here, there's this blue band. And before you say it's the atmosphere, it's not the atmosphere. I think this is an artifact. And it's an artifact caused by the Earth having been pieced in photographically. And the other weird thing again is no stars. And if you go back and look at that video of mine, I'll show it again now in a second, you can see why. Because if we look at that video looking back from the moon to the earth you will see something quite strange that the stars of course there is a parallax because the moon is orbiting around the earth 
and the stars moved behind the earth and it would have been impossible really in the 1960s to do all the calculations required and they'd have had to have done them in the 1960s because a picture like that would take an awful long time to do and get the stars in the right position and in consecutive shots have them moving in the right direction it would just be incredibly difficult so someone at NASA said hey I know what we'll leave out all the stars anyhow I hope you found this an interesting video and I'll just show you that video again and if you like this video please like share and subscribe thank you very much Classical.